Hey there, folks. Um, I'm Daniel Buckner. I work at Block uh, in TDD, and we, we're really happy to be here today. Um, we announced something a year ago, almost to the day. Uh, this Web5 thing, crazy name, you know, what is this thing? Some of you might be asking. Um, at that point, we had almost nothing done. We announced it because we took the um, approach of announcing from zero. Uh, there's two ways to do open source. One way is you can kind of build everything and you say, you know, at the end here, it's, it's done and it's open source. Um, or you can invite people along from the start. So we chose that route. Um, for that reason, we've been part of work for about a year building what you're gonna see today. I'm really excited to show you. So, nope, turn that on. This. So before we uh, talk about the future of the web, let's step back and, and uh, learn some history here. So 16 years ago, uh, HTML5 was this initiative to sort of evolve the browser. And it was really important because at that time, Apple was just putting out the iPhone and it was sort of like people were looking at the web thinking, wow, it's, it's sort of this document rendering engine, it doesn't really have an app-like experience and Flash was contending to be maybe the next interaction layer of the web. And at that time, I, I was at Mozilla and you know, helping build Firefox, and we looked at it as browser vendors and said, you know, if we're really gonna have an open layer for apps, like, we need to make this competitive at a feature level. And so HTML5 was born as this initiative that actually encompassed way more than just HTML and HTML tags, right? We have things like geolocation and audio APIs and local storage of small amounts of data. Uh, all of that is in HTML, but it had this banner that everyone got around, and it, it drove progress. And over the next five years, we evolved the web into being a capable application layer. So I think we need an effort just like HTML5 to move the web forward to what it was always supposed to be. What do we really want with this better web? Well, today we have an internet where you are sort of content donors to a lot of these large corporations. Um, you send them your data, they analyze it, um, they can Thanos snap you uh, into dust if they want to ban your accounts or erase your information. Um, we don't want that anymore, right? We want a web that's wrapped around you, essentially, that's far more personal, where you own your data, you own your identity, these are key elements that we're missing from the web, and, uh, and I think we can do it. So, that's kind of why we named it Web5. Uh, people ask questions, you know, maybe was it like a, a little separation distance between Web3, just skip the number. Um, really, it was, it was patterned after coming up with this initiative where we could rally around a set of features that we believe enhance the qualities of the web. And those three features are DIDs that allow you to have identifiers that you own and control, uh, backed by strong cryptography and keys, you own DIDs like you own your IDs, uh, verifiable credentials, um, you know, a way for people to exchange trust, and a web app model based on storing data with you. So, what's in the box here? Uh, I'll go through it a little bit. So, in-depth on decentralized identifiers. All a DID is, is a stable ID that links to keys and endpoints, essentially replacing the equivalent of DNS zone files. Um, so if you know someone's DID, you can look up these pointers, you know their keys, and so if you run into them, you understand. Um, typically, these are run as networks so that you can dial in and resolve people, um, and it gets rid of the whole directory concept where you're going to websites and like pasting things places and trying to get people to you know, point at the correct ID. Um, they're owned and controlled by you. Uh, there's no reliance on any trusted authorities. There's no CA system involved. There's no DNS trust here. Um, no special tokens or crypto schemes are needed. This runs as like a layer two right on top of uh, Bitcoin. And strongly resistant to interdiction, right? The ability to say no actor can keep the system from, from running. No actor can keep people from resolving your DIDs. Um, and discoverable and universally resolvable. So the ability, just like you type in a domain name into your browser, you know, you want to be able to resolve a DID. The second piece is verifiable credentials. So it might sound a little formal, it might sound a little governmenty, uh, but all verifiable credentials are is a data model that's been standardized by the same body that standardizes lots of other web technologies for cryptographically signing just about any statement between one or multiple parties. Uh, in this case, we have an example of an issuer who has a DID of its own, uh, educational institution in this example, uh, who's issuing a credential, uh, a, you know, some attainment credential to Alice. She receives it in her wallet, it's issued against her DID, so that she can then present it to some other verifying institution that says, hey, you know, did you, did you actually learn that you know, subject? Do you, you have this qualification? Next thing, uh, and I, I think the biggest one of the three, is decentralized web notes. What, what is this, right? 
DWeb nodes are a personal data store that is replicated on your devices and at your election, outbound remotes. Uh, they support any app type, so the ability to build just about any app, they're not tuned for just social networking or potentially just like work, it's, you can build a variety of applications on them. Like I said, they're replicated, so you, your data goes with you wherever you're at and is available locally and offline. Um, encrypted, so you can actually encrypt records that you put into your DWeb store. So like some things you might want public, like if you were to do some social media sharing or photo sharing or other things of that nature. Other things you want very private, right? You don't want to share your maybe personal documents or other photos. Um, and supports large binary. Out of, the, out of the gate, there shouldn't be this distinction between like, well, can I do this or that type of file? They support any file type. So a look at the topology. So putting all three together, we have Alice and Bob, and Alice is essentially saying, hey, you know what, I want to send a message to Bob, or I want to send a picture to Bob, or something of that nature, maybe privately. Um, she would resolve Bob's DID. She gets back the keys and endpoints, essentially the pointers to the DWeb nodes that he's running and sends a message or sends a photo. And that's replicated down to Bob's own instance on his device and has an ownership and control of it. All right, so let's get to some fun stuff. Uh, Web5 SDK, oh, that's too fast, okay. Web5 SDK is now available in Tech Preview, so we put all three of those components in a box. Uh, we make it very easy, it's a JavaScript SDK, built in TypeScript, uh, runs in browser, Node, Electron, other common JS environments, it's isomorphic, so it runs uh, in, in the client and as a server, the same package, um, includes a local DWeb node. So not only is it uh, an SDK, but it actually includes a personal data store within that actual module. Um, and you can install different app protocols and interact with data and DWeb nodes with it. And we also are announcing a DWeb node server um, in preview. It's essentially a wrap of the former. Runs in Node 18 Plus. It's multi-tenant, so you can actually have multiple DIDs. We encourage people to use a variety of IDs because you don't want everything linked to one ID. Uh, you might want like a social ID or a personal ID or a career ID. Um, it persists files at disk level and can be run on the top of any database. Uh, we actually have some really good community folks that are running them, Benry and others, uh, some, an announcement uh, to come this summer about a really, really large web company that's gonna be running this at scale. And Block is actually right now offering free instances of, instances of DWeb nodes that are linked to DID so you can get right in and build apps today. So I want to compare the web of today and, and sort of the web we need. Um, legacy auth kind of looks like this, right? Username, password, maybe people have upgraded a pass key, which is really just like key bound off to a website. Um, but they haven't freed your identity yet, right? So we need something like that. So in the SDK, we provide this Web5 Connect uh, capability where you can essentially assert to an application, like I'd like to connect and share your, an ID with them and they'll know you and log you in by that and store data in relation to that particular ID. And this is just showing a juxtaposition of the two, right? So right now, uh, we had something that came along in HTML5, which is local storage, about five megabytes of JSON data you get to store, now we have IndexedDB, um, but it's all really locked to a particular website. And that's nice, I mean, it's good for the websites, they have more functionality, but it's not, it's not, it doesn't come with you. And so what we have in Web5 is the ability to write these records into a DWM, so that your personal data is always going wherever you are, it's uh, under your control, and it's encrypted. Um, an idea, you know, today is like you can fetch photos from some service, right? Um, this is common activity. We get data as developers from the services. Um, but what if we could actually just query Bob's DWeb nodes and figure out like what data he wants to share with us? So a few more in-depth use cases. Uh, we want to make the web more powerful, more personal. And the way we're going to do that um, is, is by making it vibrant and enabling things that you can't do today. One of those things is like Alice here, maybe she, I just did this because I moved uh, about a year ago uh, into Austin, and I had to update my address everywhere. And it was like 30 different places, really a huge pain in the ass. And uh, I, I just kind of was like, why can't I just update it one place and have that sort of propagate to all these institutions that I want to have this personal information, like people who ship me packages and things like that. So the, the beauty of, of this system is that Alice can change some personal information that she has privately shared to a set of counterparties, um, and instantly, um, in near real time, they're able to react to that information and update their own systems. So um, the, the web is kind of resilient and moves with you. Secondarily, right, we all traveled to this conference, and I'm sure people don't really enjoy the idea that there's all these wallet apps that have sprung up, you know, from car rental companies to airline companies, every single hotel group has a wallet app, everyone wants you to get this wallet. Um, we think we should coalesce that experience. So things like your hotel registration, your airline tickets, your car rental, all of those things are things you could move into your DWeb nodes. 
And then you can have any app you want to connect to an ID in your UF nodes able to render an experience based on that data that should be yours. Um, next example. So we uh, have this concept, and you know, I've been talking to other teams internally and stuff. Uh, so this is the demos involving them. But uh, you know, what what if you could take certain data like your playlists and tracks and songs with you, um, so that you could just share them with another app? Because there's often times like maybe not app availability across platforms, but because Web5 is built on the web, you can build an app that's able to plumb in and you know get access to maybe playlists. In this case, of Alice's um, example. So I'm actually going to show a live demo right now, and hopefully the demo gods are, are happy with me. Um, so this is a quick app I built. The entire uh, entire surface of interacting with DIDs and the data store is under 200 lines. The rest of it is just regular applications that you build as, as developers. Um, so let me just drag over a file here, and I'll add it. Um, and yeah, let's start playing it. So, so this is, um, what, what just happened there is it stored that data locally and replicated it out to my outbound dweb nodes. Only I have access to it, didn't need to ping pong around a bunch of places. Um, and it's streaming it live through binary streams, uh, right from your personal data store. Right. Cool, so we're not done yet. So what you'll see in the SDK is there are features that are missing, we're still working. Um, you know, we've come a long way in one year, essentially from zero to here. Um, what we're going to be doing next in summer is, is all the features there, feature complete, with all the SDKs in place. Um, certainly can build apps today, you're going to build even better apps, like real-time uh, document editing, all of that stuff possible. And then in fall, we're targeting a final uh, 1.0 public launch. So this will encompass a few additional things, like mobile app so that you can manage your DIDs and your personal data connections to apps, and desktop as well. And this is kind of what those look like. When we say agent, sounds a little, a little formal again, but really that just harkens back to what a browser is as your user agent. Um, and that is something that helps you control your experience with other entities and apps. So your user agent does things like creates DIDs for you, you know, holds the keys locally, um, manages app connections when an app says, hey, you know, do you want to give me access to some of your data? And you say, great, I'll permit you to do that. It remembers all these things and helps shape your experience. And we need that on both desktop and mobile. We're, the uh, desktop agent technically is open source right now. Uh, it's, an, it's very skeletal. So again, we're starting from zero on all of our open source initiatives under this umbrella. Uh, but it's actively being built, and you should see late summits coming out. And then the mobile agent is something that we're hard at work on, both as a PWA form that can load as a pure web experience and uh, a native app. So I, I will leave time for questions if, if anyone has any, but you know we're open to build as of today. Uh, I want you to come help us build magical internet apps. I think that the web needs to be more personal and wrapped around us and not the other way around. Thank you so much.